August. You all remember August, correct? <laughs> that very hot month. <laughs> what a summer we had, but it made a beautiful fall. So. We had summer reading um, in that month. I did anyway. So I went about a different book, quoting from a different book each week. But there was one book that I really, really enjoyed. It really uplifted me and it resonated with me. Uh, Prosperity by Unity uh, co-founder Charles Fillmore. One of my favorite subjects. Prosperity. It's not a great song. I just love it. And you're all prosperous. And by the time you leave here today, if my job is done, you will leave with that attitude of prosperity, with that consciousness of abundance. Because that's what we are here to really deepen into this morning. As you can see, I'm very excited about this. Very excited. So what do I mean by abundance consciousness? And that would be a very good question. <coughs> so to answer that, before we begin this month's journey, because this whole month we are going to be diving into prosperity and abundance consciousness. So abundance consciousness is thinking from, feeling from, believing from, speaking from, acting from, and reacting from a place that says. And that's the place we're going to explore this morning. This is the place, oh, I had a, well, I had a little prop. All right, I'm going to get it. <laughs> Excuse me, this is my key. So this is the, the title of the talk is the key to it all. So I just happened to pick up this key. And the word key actually means a lot to me because it was my mother's maiden name. Oh. Yeah, keys. I had a grand, I have to tell you, because this is so cool. My grandfather's name is Golden Keys. That's so cool. So I have a golden key. So I dedicate this to my granddad. So I've got some good news. And I've got some great news. Isn't that great? The good news is we found the key to the universe. Yeah? Yeah. And the great news is it was never locked. It was never it's locked in here and in here. It's never locked. Sometimes we're locked though. And we have often locked ourselves out. So it now is going to take a new awareness to unlock us, to let ourselves back in. To let ourselves back in, and that's what we will do today. Back into within ourselves where all of that good truly resides because we're made of God stuff. And God stuff is prosperous stuff. And so that is the truth of our being. Today we'll let ourselves back into that abundance consciousness. And then all month, we're gonna work from there. So envision, if you will, so think about this, a key in your hand. So hold your keys up. Think of that key, hold it up. Beautiful keys, okay. Individualized keys, I like that. <laughs> now take that key and unlock your mind. Right? Click, click, click. Unlock your heart. Click, click, click. And take this in, okay? This is from Prosperity, the book by Charles Fillmore. Even though there seems to be material lack, there is plenty of substance for all. We are standing in the very midst of it. Like the fish, we might ask, where is the water? I love this. When we live, move, and have our being in the water, Abounding, glorious, spiritual substance is always available to us. So we are like the fish in the water, looking for the water. This is such a powerful image for me, and I think it's really important to look at the word substance. It is derived from the Latin substare, which means to stand under, to stand under. And so there is a substance standing under everything, or as Ernest Holmes would say, there is a substance back of everything. 
In other words, there is a non-material, energetic essence of the core of all. Science now knows, it's starting to prove this, now knows that there is more to life than the form, the molecules, the atoms, and the subatomic particles. There's even more. And that they are finding now, as you know, most of you anyway, that there is a space between those things. And that space in between is of great interest to scientists right now. They're trying to discover consciousness. Consciousness, the law, the infinite substance of all there is, God itself, whatever name you want to give God, is the glue that's holding everything together. And so the science are now trying to, they call it the God hole, I believe. They cannot identify the space because it's unidentifiable. It is that which is beyond all human understandings. But that particle, that whole, not the particle, the space in between the particles is a non-material energetic essence, which is the core of everything. It is the core of all that is. That is the substance that stands under everything. Fillmore is telling us what science is now finding. So I'm going to share this passage once again. Even though there seems to be material lack, there is plenty of substance, non-material energetic essence for all. We are standing in the very midst of it like fish. We might ask, where is the water? When we live, move, and have our being in it, abounding, glorious spiritual substance. That's what we are living in. We can't see it. That's where the gift of faith comes in. The gift of knowing comes in. There is a power higher than myself. Can you see it? Can you truly identify it? No. But as humans, that is, that is what we set about doing to discover this higher power. Whatever religion, whatever spiritual kind of seeking you are doing, it is really basically to fill that space within us, which is emotional, which feels like a dark hole. When we don't have a contact with a higher power of some sort, we feel alone. But to know that there is a substance back of everything, supporting us, loving us. So check in. Where is your mind and your heart? Is it unlocked to receive the idea at all? Or is it completely locked? We're just asking for a little turn of the key here. Because I'll tell you what, it's a game changer. When we really realize that there is this substance, this God stuff, within all that is, it gives us the sense of security that nothing material on the face of the earth can give us because materialistic things, which I love, by the way, <laughs> materialistic things, though, can come and go. But that substance stays through everything. To me, that's so reassuring. Fillmore goes on to write this. As you lay hold of substance with your mind and with your heart, Realize your oneness with it. You cannot be separated from the substance of good. You cannot. You can think you are, but it's not the truth of your being. It's not what we believe. It's not what we teach. So let's, right now, let's just do a little exercise where we can go within. I'm going to ask you if you're comfortable, close your eyes and take a really deep breath. Now let your body sink into this idea and think to yourself, I am one with substance. 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 So keep your eyes closed as I go through this because Fillmore continues. As you are unified with the one living substance, which is your God, your all-sufficiency. So take another deep breath. And let your heart, mind, and body sink into the idea that you are unified with this one living substance, which is God, 
all sufficiency. And so I want you to repeat this with me. I am unified with the one living substance. I am unified with the one living substance. Which is God. Which is God. My all sufficiency. My, my all sufficiency. And Fillmore continues again. From this stance, you were created, from this substance, you were created. In it, you live, move, and have your being. By it, you are fed and prospered. The spiritual substance is steadfast, immovable, and enduring. It does not fluctuate with market reports. It does not decrease in hard times, nor increase in good times. It is the ever constant, abundant, freely circulating, and available. The spiritual substance is a living thing not an inanimated accumulation of bread that does not satisfy hunger, no water that fails to quench thirst. It is the living bread and the living water, and when we feed on God's substance, we shall never hunger and never thirst. <coughs> the substance is an abiding thing, not a bank deposit that can be withdrawn, nor a fortune that can be lost. It is the unfailing principle that is as sure in its workings as the law of mathematics. And he continues, we can no more be separated from our supply of substance than life can be separated from its source. As God permeates the universe and life permeates every cell of the body, so does substance flow freely through us. There was some, those are some powerful words, so breathe them in. Let them anchor in your mind and in your heart. When you feel they have been installed, just allow them to flow down a little bit deeper. And take another deep breath. You can open your eyes. So let's get back to our definition of abundance consciousness from this place. What is it? It is thinking from, feeling from, believing from, speaking from, acting from, reacting from a place that says from substance I was created. In substance I live, move, and have my being. By substance I am fed and prospered. This spiritual substance is steadfast and immovable, enduring, ever the same, constant, abundant, freely circulating and available. And so let those ideas instill us even deeper, so deeply. So first unlock the doors to your heart and to your mind, just a little bit, just a, a teeny bit with your key, golden key. Mine's golden, yours can be anything. But it's the key, it's symbolic. We lock ourselves out and don't realize we are not really locked out, the door's not locked. It's open. It's always been open. Here is your charge then. To the extent that you do not already have this abundance consciousness, let this November 2018 be that month where you can open up a little bit more to the substance of joy, to the substance of love that is truly all around us, despite what conditions are fully unlocking your heart and your mind to, to get it. So Eric Butterworth, we didn't know, in Spiritual Economics, Veronica read from that, wrote this, watch your spiritual priorities. The goal should not be to make more money or acquire things, but to achieve the consciousness through which the substance will flow when and as you need it. 
when and as you need it, the universe always supports us. I've proven this to myself, and I know many of you have proven this to yourself. Just when you think everything's been removed, the groundsman pulled that from underneath me. You are open. You are vulnerable. It's the greatest gift that could ever happen. Why? It's the greatest gift that could ever happen to you because that's when the good of the universe, when you trust it, moves in and provides unbelievable, unbelievable good. It supports us all of the time. And the gift is knowing that so that we don't live in fear. So I want that for all of us, that we have this consciousness through which the substance flows forth, even when we don't see it, but as we desire it, as we need it, as we want it, as we call it forth. I want to speak of two tangible ways in which we can open up to this abundance consciousness. The first is to stand always this, standing gratitude for substance, gratitude and for all the ways in which it is already expressing in your life. There are so many things for us to be grateful for. There are so many things for us to be grateful for. We're here. I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. I'm standing straight, by the way, because I was in so much pain for so many years that I couldn't stand straight, but I was up here in front of this microphone. I'm grateful that I'm up here in front of this microphone and not in pain. never gave up believing in the healing. And the healing, it, it, it occurred. It would have healed me, if not physically, emotionally and mentally anyway, because I was so open and receptive to healing in whatever form. I really wanted the physical form because it hurts, you know? It's no fun living in pain, but you do and you learn from it and you move forward, as I said last week, one step at a time. So we always have something to be grateful for. And that gratitude increases the flow of good in our lives. When we're in that vibration frequency, of gratitude, only more good can come to us. It's the way the law works. And I'm talking about the law of God, not the law of man, the law of God. The second way is to realize, and more than realize, embody. And Ernest Holmes wrote this in Science of Mind at page 262. He wrote, it is right that we should be successful. For otherwise, the spirit is not expressed. The divine cannot lack for anything, and we should not lack for anything that makes life worthwhile here on earth. Everything that we do should be a success, and we should be led to those things which are constructive and worthwhile. So this speaks to giving yourself permission to dream. And more than, I love dreaming, fantasize. Remember when you were a child and you daydreamed? If you were me, you were always daydreaming. And so, you know, the nuns were always yelling at me for yeah, that. Yes. But, oh my God, they just knock it right out of you. Don't daydream. That's one of the greatest gifts, faculties that we were gifted with, to dream. So dream, hold the vision for your dreams. As you hold that vision, all of a sudden, the universe in all of its many ways, because it responds to the law of cause and effect, the law of attraction, all those laws, it must move into your experience. What you impress upon the law, which is the substance of God, is what you get back. It might not be at the time you want it, but just stay steadfast. Stay steadfast. I had a dream for this community since it's been open, eight years now. And that is that we are in our most beautiful space. And that there is, it's beautiful. There's nothing on the walls, number one. <laughs> so if there's something, it's my own thing. I've made friends, and I'm so grateful for Starting Point and allowing us to have this space. But I've had a dream that we are in a beautiful space, a big space, a gorgeous space, one that just feeds our hearts, our souls. It's beautiful. And so I still continue to hold that vision because I know, I know it's going to come true. So I'm making that bold, that bold declaration. And I'm giving it a date before 
on or before January 1st, 2020. That's my, that's my vision. And it has been my vision, even though I didn't have the date eight years ago. I thought it would happen like in a year. <laughs> it's going to happen in divine time, right? So everything in perfect order. That's when we learn to let go. That letting go is paramount to our success. So give yourself permission to dream, to dream big. Because I'll tell you, I'm done playing small. And I'm done with our community playing small. I, and smallness does not serve the world, as Marianne Williamson so beautifully wrote. Playing small doesn't serve the world. It just doesn't. So the key to it all is having that abundance consciousness, which is to think from, to feel from, to believe from, to speak from, to act from and react from a place which is filled with substance. So from substance I was created. Take that in. In substance I live, move, and have my being. By substance I am fed and prospered. This spiritual substance is steadfast and immovable, enduring, ever the same, constant, always abundant, freely circulating, always giving of itself. But we have to be open to receive it. If we're locked up from it by our limiting thoughts and our limiting emotions, it cannot get through. The door is not locked. Remember that. So I want us to deepen into the knowing that no matter what experience that we're going through, this too shall pass, it always does. More good is flowing to us than we could ever realize. Truly, all of the time, we swim in an ocean of receptivity, of limitless potential and possibilities of prosperity. Waves of good are washing upon us all of the time when we are open and receptive to it, through gratitude and through that dreaming, holding that vision. Those are two big avenues of allowing this good to flow through to and as us. And we are tired, are we not tired of playing small, of speaking small? You know, if I'm good, maybe a little bit of good will come into my life? No. It's like, no, it's like, no, I'm claiming my good. I'm thinking bigger. I want bigger, I want to express more of this God stuff, and I know all of us can express more of this God stuff. We were created to inherit the kingdom of good. That is what we were created out of, that is what we will return to, so it's still present with us, in us, and through us. It is our true self. And so I hope you join me this month for more of this deepening into conscious uh, prosperity consciousness, abundant consciousness. And so it is. Woo!